Alright, so the second part of the objective today is to look at sexual versus asexual reproduction. Our essential question for this section is what are the advantages and disadvantages of an organism going through sexual reproduction? Okay? So if we look at this, this is a very simple way to look at what sexual and asexual reproduction is. In sexual reproduction, you have one cell, you start off with one cell, you end up with two, but the two look exactly the same as the first one. So if you look right here, I started with one, it kind of starts splitting in half, completely split in half. These two end up being exactly the same. In sexual reproduction, you have two cells, they kind of go through and they fuse together and have an exchange of DNA and so on, and you end up with another cell. But the cell that you end up with is very different from the two that you started off with. So, we are going to look at the differences between sexual and asexual reproduction, and then talk about the advantages and disadvantages of sexual reproduction. Now, once again, you don't have to make a Venn diagram, but if we're looking at how they're similar and different, it might help, or a teacher might help. So if we look at how they're the same, in both of them, it's reproduction of living things. All organisms go through one or the other, or some of them go through both. And in both of them, DNA is passed from one parent, from parent to offspring. So in both sexual and asexual, basically that's a way to reproduce or to make babies. Okay? And in both of them, you are passing DNA, you're passing the genes from parent to offspring. So let's look at asexual reproduction first. In asexual reproduction, you always start off with one parent. You have one parent. 100% of the offspring, 100% of the babies look exactly the same as the parent. Has the exact same DNA, has the exact same chromosomes. Basically, it's a clone. Okay? So, if we look at this picture, on the parent cell, it starts, the DNA starts replicating, which basically means copying. And then I end up with two exact same cells as a parent. Every single organism can or does go through asexual reproduction. Your body goes through asexual reproduction. Your body itself goes through asexual reproduction. That is how your cells replicate. When you cut yourself, if it's not too deep, okay, it scabs a little bit, right? And then when that scab's gone, your skin looks exactly the same, right? If you don't get a scar tissue. It looks exactly the same as it was before, correct? Mm -hmm. That occurs because your cells are going through asexual reproduction. The cells that are surrounding the part that you got cut are basically dividing in half over and over again and making exact copies of, this, of themselves to basically regenerate the area. So, even though we are animals and humans go through sexual reproduction, we do have asexual reproduction occurring within us because our cells are doing it all the time. That's how our cells fix themselves, by dividing and making new ones of the same thing. So asexual reproduction is when you have one parent and the offspring, the baby cells, look exactly the same as the one previous one before. So that's why when you cut yourself, your skin looks exactly the same that it was before. Now, when it's a very deep cut, you end up getting a scar, right? Now, was the scar exactly the same as before? No, because you didn't have it. So in us, we can fix ourselves to a certain point. But once there is too much damage, then you end up having scar tissue. Or like, let's say if I lose an arm, I'm not going to grow another arm. I wish I did, but I don't. And the reason for it is because our cells can, can regenerate and go through asexual reproduction, but only to a certain point. Now, um, 
So asexual reproduction, one parent, 100% of the offspring will be exactly the same. What if the cell like infected? That's what we, like for example, cancer cells, that's what happens. Cancer cells are cells that reproduce and go through asexual reproduction and they don't stop. They keep going and keep going. That's what tumors are, is basically an overgrown cells, too many cells. Um, that's basically what cancer is. Okay? So, uh, uh, yes. is that what chemotherapy can get yeah. for? Chemotherapy, chemotherapy is to, yes, to kill those cells. Basically, that's what chemotherapy does. Any oh, type of radiation treatment is to kill, to try and kill those cells and try to stop them from continuing to grow. Unfortunately, with any of those treatments, it doesn't just kill the cancer cells, it kills all the cells. That's why um, you'll see them losing hair, you'll see them getting sick because of the fact that it's not only poisonous to the cancer cells, it's poisonous to all your cells. But, I mean, I it's... I thought, like, radiation follows, you know... It can but what you need to think about is the radiation treatment is measured. They're measuring that. They're measuring how much they're putting in and measuring what time and different things. So, yes, it's bad, but at the same time, I mean, if you have a tumor that's growing ridiculously fast, you have to do something to stop it. Um, a lot of times they'll go in and they try to take it out, but unfortunately, they don't have everything. They don't take everything out. You still have that one little cell in there. If you leave one cell in there, it's going to start dividing and doing it again. So what they'll do is they'll take it out, or take as much of it out as they think they got, and then they'll treat you with chemotherapy and radiation to try, if we left one cell, to get that cell killed, to try to stop it. Okay. So um, there are different types of asexual reduction. The first one is vision, which basically just means that a cell splits itself in half and makes two exactly one same ones. All bacteria and protists do that. Um, so basically fission is just the split in half. Now do you need to know the word fission? No. Do you need to know that there's one type that you just have a cell and it splits in half? Yes. Okay? So you just need to understand that sexual reproduction can occur, a, I'm sorry, asexual reproduction can occur in several ways. One is taking a cell, splitting it in half, and you get two exactly the same copies. Yes. Is it like fusion where they come together? Yes, fusion is coming together. But fission is great. Yeah. Right. Right, asexual reproduction is whenever you basically take a piece, like a plant, you take, you take a piece of some of the plants, and you put another pot and it starts growing a new one. Okay? Asexual reproduction. Um, budding, basically a little piece falls off, and it grows a whole new one. A hydra, this is what a hydra looks like. Basically, it's a sea creature. Okay, this piece right here is eventually going to break off and fall off, and then make a new one. So, asexual reproduction can occur in, in a variety of ways, but if you get a new, an exact new clone, same thing. Fragmentation. This is called a, a planaria. If I cut it into three pieces, I end up with three of them. A head grows, a tail grows. Okay, uh, starfish. You've heard of starfish getting their arm, one arm of the arms cut off and then it grows back? Okay, that's asexual reproduction. So in asexual reproduction, you basically get exactly the same of what you already have. I know. In sexual reproduction, you start off with two parents and you get different genes in the baby that there were, that were not before. Okay? So in sexual reproduction, you have to have two parents, and now you have different genes. They're not the, ba the babies, the offspring, are not the exact same as the parents. And the reason for it is because the genes mix, and, one, and the cells end up getting half of the information. Sexual reproduction, you should know more about than asexual, so we're not going to talk too much about it. But there are two types of sexual reproduction, or two ways. Internal <laughs> meaning the egg and the sperm are fertilized inside of the organism's body. Okay? Mam yeah, all mammals. mammals do that, birds, things like that. External sexual reproduction is when fertilization occurs outside of the body. Example, fish. Fish go through sexual reproduction. 
Basically, the female fish lays the eggs, just the eggs, by themselves. The male fish swims over it, allows its sperm to drop on the eggs. Fertilization occurs outside of, the, of that fish. So it's still sexual because you still have two, two cells. You have the egg and the sperm. That's All right. Yes. That is the end. Listen. Don't get up. That is the end of those. My, I didn't get. I wasn't able to give you a special assignment. So if you want it, you can either come today after school, or you can look online. It'll be on there. It's a, a folder two for sexual versus asexual. Have a good day. Or you can wait till tomorrow.